Welcome to Think Alive. We're Sharon and Andy, just two people with a dream and a vision of restoring our traditional stone-built farmhouse in southern Spain, transforming it into a beautiful off-grid home and sharing our journey with you. Morning everyone. Good morning, welcome back to the Finca. It's a beautiful day, not a cloud in the sky. However, we have had it so, so cold, minus four last night. Um, so we've not been doing much outdoors. It's crazy, been crazy, hasn't Absolutely it? Absolutely crazy. 40 degrees in the summer and then minus temperatures in the winter. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, it, very short spring, very short autumn. It stays, it's cold and then it goes red hot and then it goes cold. It does. So it takes a bit of getting used to it. Yes. We can't actually get acclimatised. <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah, so... Solve the battery problem. Yeah, that blanket, I put a little board on top now, at the moment there, it gets, it never goes below 10.7. The manufacturer's confirmed that at below 10 degrees C, it can reduce the charging capacity of it. Mm -hmm. um, but we've fixed it, it's all good. No need to put any pads on it, no heating pads or anything. No. Nope. It's been working perfectly. And now it's set to get warmer from today, yes, tomorrow. Yes, fingers crossed. Uh, so we've, we've got through this winter. Um, yeah, we've got tons and tons and tons of power. It's awesome. Um, what else was there? Our habitation certificate. Oh yes, at if last. You saw that sketch. <laughs> um, we finally got it. So now we can apply for our padrons, but we think we understand that we've got to go through the whole we've got process. Got to go back to the town hall and do it all over again. <laughs> so Spanish bureaucracy, you just have to love it. Even though they've got <laughs> everything on file already yep. on record. Um, yep. So. I'm going to pop them an email first to see if we can circumvent that and shorten the process. Or at least make an appointment so that we don't have to stand in a queue yeah. for hours. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, so what are we on? We're on the floor today. We are. We're going to do something oof, I've never done before in my life. No, um, floating floor. A floating wooden floor. I've <laughs> done laminate floors before. Um, but we're going to try and put a floor. It's so uneven. We'll show you shortly. It slopes, it's uneven, it's got things, so we're going to insulate it underneath and try and float down um, some nice pine floorboards like we've got in the rest of the place yeah. on top of it. So, it should be a challenge. Let's crack Let's on, crack it's going to be a challenge. <laughs> so, here we are up in the hayloft. So it's nice and warm. Yeah, we've been throwing <laughs> kilowatts of free heat in yes, at it all yes. the time. Using our free Keep power. If you remember from a previous video, um, this was the old hayloft and along here, this was a solid wall, along here were animal troughs. Um, We've still got one of the rings still got one of the rings. retain <laughs> for posterity. Um, that being the case, this floor, you probably can't tell, but it actually slopes towards the door and our guess is that um, they obviously they used to have to swill it out and the water would then drain yeah. away. You don't naturally. notice it. Um, we were contemplating compensating and making it level. level. Mm -hmm. But we've been living with this for over a year now and it, it's fine. It's so fine. we're going to lay the new floor on top of this it's all, it slopes that way, it slopes that way, it's only gently. Um, so we're just going to roll with that. Um, and we're going to put um, some XPS thick insulation boards on the floor to hide all the little discrepancies. Yes, <laughs> um, and then attempt to um, float the floor on top of it. Yeah. Um, I think the first thing we need to do, we'll spin the camera around in a minute though, we're having a coir, run a coir carpet matting from the door, which is behind you, yeah. sort of up to the step here so we can come in we're probably going to put a little bench in so we can take sit down take our take shoes, shoes off in, yeah, shoe free zone idea. anyway and um yeah there's <laughs> contemplating this again there's probably going to be a step a little step up onto the floor but it's a big enough area um because we're just going to lay the mat directly on top of the concrete yeah if it becomes a pain we'll lift the mat which will be quite easy to do but the xps insulation boards that go underneath um, they, they're hard but they're soft if you know what I mean <laughs> so we'd rather not lay them out yeah, a bit on. like polystyrene isn't it we'll show you one in a minute sort of yeah sort and if you are wearing chairs wearing heels it'll dent the mat through into the thing so we'll yeah. try it on the concrete first 
if it becomes a problem, we'll lift it up on a sheet of timber yeah. or something like that. Yeah. So let's get this mat done. by the map the walls like a the whole room is a, a rhomboid shape it's not even they're not even trying to build it square so every single piece is gonna have to be cut at a, some crazy angle um it's not gonna be easy that's why we've been putting it off for so long <laughs> one of the reasons yeah but we're in there we're bitten the bullet now how does that look now pretty good there just a little bit to me to you on this side oh. <laughs> that side Perfect, perfect. Let it settle a minute and then we'll look what's next. It's been rolled up for too long. Not sure yet what we're going to do down this edge. Um, whether it'll be boards or whether we might stone, stone it. Maybe, yeah. um, but we need to find stones Listen. thin enough and not too heavy. I'm thinking on our feet <laughs> or on our knees. <laughs> and the same there really. We're going to have to put Yes, we need to do some work some on work the door because um, this is all still a mess, but we'll yeah. cross that bridge in the future. Yes. Cool, right. Come out to the wall. Okay. I relocated the table um, <laughs> because we need to do that space first to try and work out what's going to work best. Um, I think let's move these and put it right up to the wall, shall we? Not a lot of space. <laughs> okay. It'll be alright there, I think, for now. Just a little bit more. That's it. Make sure it's not going to touch the stone, make sure it's off the stone. Put it back a bit. Look, we break it. That's it. Lovely. Right, cool. Right, so these are the boards. Um, the first thing I want to do is cut this one. Um, to this angle of the mat, flip it over and hopefully we're going to have the same angle at that side which will make life so much easier because when I come to cut the boards I'll just need one setting on the saw. Yeah no that's not going to happen don't you? <laughs> but the first thing I think, get this one cut. These all interlock and um, I'm going to stick them all down with a, probably a bit of expanding foam just a little bit underneath and just to hold them where we want them. And, um, this should give an absolute solid base for the boards to go over the top. The absorb is pretty strong stuff. Um, it'll absorb all the discrepancies. So this is my theory, never done this before, but it's the best solution I can come up with. We can't even, we even consider putting a self-leveling compound on it, but because it's so old, I mean, they're 150 years old, there's a lot of weight already in the concrete. We don't want to add too much weight to it. So we're going to try this. Um, nothing ventured, nothing gained, eh? So I've never ever cut one of these before either. Um, I've used my YouTube um, consultants <laughs> to see the best way to do it. Apparently this is one of these um, knife things. What I've done, I've marked it. I'm just going to score it down. I'm not sure this is sharp enough. I've done a lot of cutting and then there we go. Apparently you're just supposed to just draw it through. That's 
seems to be working. Don't stick it in my leg. difficult but um, we'll work our way around it. Okay eventually we've got the first row in. We're just going to put a little bit of foam under them just to stop them moving to make life a bit easier for us for no other reason than that. Just to hold them in place. Cool, carry on. Right, so we've got them and we're going to go for a second row. Um, the bit I cut off that can go in the end, use the right angle, in theory. And um, so two straight balls down and then just one cut at the end. Then I'm going to put a bit of foam under them, I'm going to leave them to go off because when I come to put the boards down, they never slot together like jigsaws. Um, they always sometimes need a bit of brutality. So we're going to let these go off first and let them fixed in place and then start on the boards probably do it the boards up to here and then work out the rest of it. Anyway I'll get these down. this made last night just having the map down there and this bit here well yesterday afternoon later on just with the heaters on they normally hold it at a selfie <laughs> helping they normally hold it at um, a constant temperature but they've actually been lifting it so we should have done this in November probably <laughs> but uh, that's another story anyway um, right what I'm going to do I'm going to use this piece which is the piece I cut off that corner there to um, set the angle of my saw. Although the both sides are different, um, there's going to be a skirting board on there, so it doesn't matter if the angles are slightly off or not, because I want to try and get this one exact, and once the saw's done, to keep changing it for each side is a pain. Um, I'm going to try and get that run, obviously, as perfect as I can. Um, it's not easy because you only have to be a fraction of a degree out and they'll step out. The ideal way would be to put them down and then cut them all off. Um, but the only way I've got to cut them is either with a jigsaw or a circular saw, um, which would leave a, a rough ripped edge on it. So if it doesn't work out perfectly, I shall just put a trim on it. We're not that bothered. So the first thing I'm going to do, um, set my saw to that angle, start in that corner, See if we can get some rows in. The first ones are going to be tricky because they're going to be light, but as more go in, it gets heavier and easier, hopefully. So, let's go and set the sort of saw out.
Alright, we'll try that. Right, Elm, so we've got the first two in. Um, this is going to be my cut. Um, I was hoping this would transfer to that end, in fact it probably will. What I don't want is really short pieces on this end. Um, so that should that might should work out alright. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to mark this up to the edge of my mat because the trim piece is going to go underneath and um, cut it and see what happens. The reason, if you can see what I've done, I've got the groove on this side and the tongue on that side because when I get to that end there's going to be some tricky cuts and it's easier to slot the tongue in and drop them down than it is the other way around. So there you go. Right okay so because the wall's all over the place now we've got a full run I can see this angle's off already. Um, I've even just laid this down and I can see it's off a little bit. Um, so what I'm going to do um, is just take a, a nick off that Try and readjust the angle a bit, then hopefully put this back and we'll have a straight angle and then I can cut this one the same and um, it should run nicely. Um, at the other end, um, you can see the joint there, how it's staggered and varied, but it doesn't matter. So once the skirted board's on, we've trimmed that up, that'll disappear. Probably going to put a cupboard in this corner anyway. Um, but once we get this right set up initially, it should be get more plain sailing. It's just a fiddling amount to start off with. There might be a better way of doing it. I don't know what it is. If anyone knows, it'll be too late to suggest it anyway because it'll be done. <laughs> so, and these are a bit tight up to there as well because you need to allow a little bit for expansion and contraction. So, when I cut a bit more off that end over there, it'll give us a tiny gap all the way along. And um, yeah, we'll go and try it. Right, so I've taken a bit off it. It's still not absolutely perfect, but I'm going to leave this one. For the difference now it's, it's just not even a millimetre but do the next one at a slightly more acute angle um but yeah that's looking pretty good actually and we'll tell clearly when this one's fit because it looks like it wants to go back that way a bit there anyway which will actually make it perfect what we're going to do first is glue these two together then they're done set one piece of wood all the way along all right so there goes nothing I'm going for gluing here. Um, you always make sure you've got a cloth and a bowl of water when you're doing this because you need to, it wipes off straight away. It's water soluble, but um, you need to get it off immediately. I'm going to put a bead along the top of the the tongue there, and a bead along the bottom of the groove there. So we've got glue on both sides of the joint. So once we get this one in. Should get a bit easier, says <laughs> in theory. Right, so here we go. It's going in. There we go, it's in. We'll get this one in there for now. That's it. Right, good. Now I can position it while the glue's still damp. Alrighty. Nice. Right, we're pretty happy with that. Well, Sharon's happy with it, so that's what matters. Um, I'm going to put this end one in first because I want this obviously this edge here to be as perfect as I can get it so I put this one in first so same as I did before I'm going to warm one on the groove along here one on the top of the tongue on this side we'll get a system going with this yet together. Yeah, 
Get that for easy. <laughs> Right, I'll mess about with it. So, several hours later, um, yes, these boards, as kind of half expected, like if you saw the last ones when we did the ceiling, absolutely terrible. Twisted, warped, bent, lots of knots and holes in them. Very difficult to use. Um, a lot easier when you nail them to joists, because obviously the, the nailing thing you use beats them into place and then locks them solid. Um, but we are getting there. Got a lovely straight edge down that side there. Can you see it? I'll move out of the way. Maybe not, <laughs> but it is. We'll show you in a bit, obviously. Um, but yeah, it's gonna take a while, but we're very happy so far with the results. And um, well now it's time to light the fire, get something to eat, have a relax, and we'll carry on with it tomorrow. So, it's another day. Um, beautiful super warm sunny afternoons we're getting now um, temperatures heading up towards 20 heading that way um, still below freezing overnight though so a bit of a um, bit of a change um, I'm going to get one more row on these boards I've put down now and then get the next set of boards down and um, I'm just going to carry on Right, okay, so I've got the last row down. I'm into the corner. I've just put a small piece in there to make it easy for myself. It really rises up there, so I've left the corner off it. The boards can fly over the end of it. They're never gonna get stood on there. It's, they should be fine. Um, so I'm gonna get a, see if I can get a couple of full ones in here now and get these um, bonded down and um, we'll be ready to carry on. Right, I've got two full ones down now. Henry's just waiting them down because I'll put a bit of foam under it. Um, I'm gonna just want to cut for that edge over there. Um, I think what we're gonna do then um, for later is put the table on the ones we did yesterday or put the chairs up there because it's, it's just an awful walking around it all and everything. Um, and we're gonna have to leave these until tomorrow now for them to go off or so until later on um, and in the meantime we've run out of glue as well it's hard to come out there's not much left in it so we need to get some glue but I'll get this end one done and um, that leaves us in a good position there we go last piece is in um, this is why I wanted to do it in the summer really because it would be much better to have the room completely empty but we're getting there um, like I said before we'll let all this lot go off now and then put the table back, put the chairs in where they're going to live in front of the fire, put the table back, put some timber under the back legs and um, yeah, pick it up on the next one. Right, okay, so that's us, that's all we can do. Um, it's an absolutely beautiful day. I think we're going to go and get some lunch at the bar, shall I think we? we are, yes, because we can't do any more, as Andy said. Um, donkey's had a good graze, he's doing a, a grand, grand job, job of the weeds, <laughs> if you remember what they were like at the start of the video. 
Um, so yeah, we're going to usher him inside, which is not easy because he didn't like to move. And uh, go and get something to eat. So. Yes, so thank you so much for watching. Um, we'll be on all the tricky cuts on the next one. It's not going to get any easier at all. Um, but hopefully we'll have made a bit of progress next Thursday when we will see you then. Thanks for watching. Thanks to all the subscribers. Welcome to the new subscribers. Thanks to everyone that supported the channel. We'll see you on. We'll see you on Thursday. Thursday.